Hello there, Aku here again. Welcome to episode 34 of my Ultimate Feed the Beast Let's Play. Um, I've got a little announcement-ish news kind of thing to start with. Um, as some of you may know, 1.5 of Minecraft is, I believe it's out for vanilla. And the Feed the Beast guys are working towards getting it out for the Feed the Beast packs. It's still quite early on. If you, you can uh, search Google and... Through searching Google, you can find a Google Docs, Google Docs like spreadsheet of how far on all the mods are towards 1.5, and they're about 30% done. So it's going to be a long way off yet. But um, I'm thinking when that's done, uh, I've been speaking to the guys who I play on the main server with, and they're willing to do a server restart when 1.5 comes for the ultimate pack. So I'm thinking, uh, let me know what you think. I'm thinking of Wrapping season zero up, because if you notice this is season zero, I just started it as uh, the day the ultimate pack came onto the, well the day I found out about it on, as the ultimate beta pack, I didn't, I wasn't sure how long the beta would last, so I just made it season zero. Um, so I'm thinking of making season one proper on a fresh server with the guys on a main server, and that main server will persist a lot longer than this one. And we'll, I'm thinking of starting again there, so let me know what you think, uh, I think it's a good idea. We'll get all the fresh welds in with the uh, the vanilla quartz and the uh, ME quartz, the applied and logistics quartz on the main server because we started that as a Minecraft server. We got to, had to go miles from spawn, thousands of meters from spawn to get the ultimate weld gen stuff in, like the applied and logistics quartz and stuff. Uh, we think it's going to be a good idea. And then I'll be on the server with the other guys as well. And you'll be able to see what they make. They're, they're quite creative as well. So I'll be able to do little server tours and stuff. And because the server is going to persist a lot more, a lot longer, and it's got more people in, I'll probably do a lot more actual building stuff rather than just technical stuff. Uh, if you notice on my videos from the Hump Cutting uh, playlist, there's sometimes you can see there's like a big marble structure near my first factory that was a titan from uh, warhammer that i was making but uh, i never finished it because i made it even and by that i mean i made it like uh, 16 squares across instead of making it odd so you have a square in the middle and i prefer building odd this place is even as well which winds me up a little bit but somehow i managed to make it that these all these corner squares are odd so i have got odd places within an even structure i prefer building odd and i fancy if we if i if that's where we go and I start again, um, I'm probably going to try and make a Titan again and have, that, have a Titan as my base. Uh, Titans in Warhammer 40k, they're, they're just like a massive, massive robot, really big. They've got like a castle on the top of them. And I fancy making one for, for a while. Uh, if you look at my B videos, you can kind of see it. If when I'm on the roof of the factory there, you can kind of see it off in the distance. And I only got about halfway up it, but it's still pretty massive. So I fancy doing that again. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's enough of that. I just, um, just wanted to let you know. I don't know when that's coming. I say it might be a couple of months. It might be a couple of months away as far as I know. It might be a few weeks away. Uh, but the current thinking is we'll we'll do a server restart on the main server and then I'll start doing a series there instead of here on my own. So yeah, uh, I'm just playing around with the ME, ME stuff. What I'm doing is I, I'm upgrading a couple of solos. Now, as you've seen, I've been upgrading them to the advanced solars which takes two UU matter each but if you think about it if you upgrade an advanced solar by two UU matter you get from one EU output up to eight so six UU matter that gets me from three EU output to 24 whereas if I put if I use that six UU matter upgrading an advanced to a hybrid it goes from eight EU to 64 so I'm getting miles I'm getting much more EU output per UU matter if I'm upgrading to hybrids so I've decided that I'm going to upgrade to hybrids until uh, once I've got all the eight of these advanced upgraded to hybrids then I can make it that into an ultimate hybrid and that's putting out 512 EU a tick then so that's that seems to be a better way of going so I've got five UU matter there I had 11 from overnight I said this this seems to be working okay. Um it's just producing UU matter 
at a slow rate at the minute but as I said the more I upgrade these the quicker that'll get so that's all good uh, I've added an extra fabricator on here with the hybrid pattern in there and as you can see I've made 64 lapis lazuli blocks probably a bit of overkill and I should have made 63 just so it's even and I'm going to take one of them out and uh, turn it back into normal that's the kind of thing that the kind of insane thing that winds me up um, right what we're doing what we're doing at the minute I'm making some carbon plates see I'm throwing stuff into the rotary macerator there if we come down I've added a couple of more recipes to this thing we've got the carbon fiber and the carbon mesh this is quite nice I, I've, I've done the processor assembly and the basic processor assembly advanced and basic and the quartz knife uh, wood sticks and the TNT and uh, I don't know if there was there either machine block and advanced machine block so I've, I've added a couple of things in there not, not a great deal and I actually right I've not got circuits in there yet have I so we'll probably I'll probably add circuits now as well and what I'm doing is now I've got that there I can just craft I can click on that and I can add 64 and click begin now I've already done that and um, once you start doing auto crafting with this you need there's another block that you you want to be getting and that's called that's this block it's called the ME crafting monitor and as you can see there it's showing me what's crafting so I made in there I clicked on that I made 64 of them craft and then you can see there it's halfway through so 32 of them are being crafted now and it's currently missing coal dust so if I put some more coal in there you'll see at some point it's getting coal dust from over there see that just dropped to 31 so that's because it, it made one more of them and of course because they're in the export bus for the compressor they get made straight into carbon plates so that's automated my carbon plate manufacture now all I've got to do is get coal dust Um I've not automated my coal dust yet I'm thinking I'm going to need a, to make a couple more macerators at least one more induction furnace and I don't know about compressors and extractors yet but certainly at least one more macerator at least one more induction furnace so that's getting us plenty of these carbon plates um, I'm going to take the full 64 for now and this is I mean this is going to take ages to actually use all this stuff up but I thought I might as well put it in there we're going to want a lot of advanced circuits so let's make a pattern for them for the crafting uh, and I want to keep throwing coal in there as I remember as I remember so for advanced circuit we're going to need well for normal circuit first we'll need one of them and one of them and one of them yep so that'll let us encode a basic circuit so let's do that that goes there goes there and there put in a blank click encode so there's that and now with a basic circuit so I can put them back and I'll do turn that back into a uh, lapis do I put it in a macerator that's a oops that was the wrong button uh, press U and let's see where that goes and um, pulverizer yes yeah, so a macerator will work as well I guess yeah, there it does okay so I'm gonna put that through there get rid of that and keep burning coal and now I want a basic circuit which I've got there and I want a bit of gloss and I've already got a bit of lapis a bit of redstone and with that we'll be able to make a pattern for the advanced circuit oops that's the wrong place and there and there there we go so I make the advanced circuit like so and then stick them back in there stick these two in here 
and we get more crafting capability. Excellent. So what I can do now is let's go with 64 of them. Now there's three in there already, so the thing's not going to show up. That's right here. So whenever there's any of the item in there, it doesn't show. So I'm going to just take them three out. And now we should have the recipe shown at the bottom. Excellent. Oh, the other way I think you can do that is if I change that to craft, craftable, yeah. So then it'll show it as craftable. So let's make 64 of them. Begin. And now that should be making them as well. So if we look in there, it's not showing it. Has it made them already? And that's made them already. Wonderful. So because we had the pattern in for the basic circuit, it made enough basic circuits for us. Use up the ones it had. It made all the basic circuits we needed. And then it made it all them into advanced circuits. So a simple click of a button. A couple of clicks of buttons. I've got 64 advanced circuits. Wonderful. Very nice. It's an excellent mod you've made, Mr. Algorithm. If you watch, I'm pretty sure you don't. Uh, what do we need now? Iridium plates. Now, I've got quite a lot of Iridium. It's doing alright. Uh, as I showed you last time. I had a valuable bee down here. I've actually got a couple more now as well. So that's my radioactive. So a valuable lapis. Valuable. Valuable, yeah. So I've got three valuable queens producing now. Um, something I didn't show you last time, which I'll just show you, show you now, is of course all my bee items go into here via that tesseract, which is just from that tesseract over there. That's, that could just be pipe to be honest, but the way I'm getting stuff upstairs from there is off the back of here I've got a couple of export buses. I've got one here that's taking all the products that are coming out, so sticky resin on the propolis, tiny platinum dust, uranium ore from the radioactive bee, lapis from the lapis bee, glowstone from the um, demonic, and then emerald dust and olivine dust from the emerald bee that I've got up there. So that's where they all go in, and they're just if you look at the tesseract under there, they're just going into the ME network input. And then I've got some stuff here that's just going to void. Bert saplings, barren and rocky combs. And they're just going into the void tesseract. Um, I'm getting rid of the cone because that's full and I'm getting all the products that I need. So I've got a really comb, a little bit of lapis, radioactive, emerald, platinum. All the good stuff's in there. And the products that the Baron and the Rocky give, I'm, I'm already, I've already got plenty of, so I've just been binning them for now. Uh, as I mentioned last episode, this is slowly going down. As you can see, we've lost three and a half stacks of oily propolis, but that's been about five days, I think, since that was full. So it's going down at a really slow rate, as long as I keep checking it maybe once a week, that's never going to run out, so that's good. Uh, jump back up here. What that does is it shows that plenty of iridium. I've got 33 ingots there and I've got 124 nuggets here, so that's all good. That's all good. Should I make. Yeah, let's make. Let's make um, a pattern for this as well. Because obviously we're never, we're never going to want our nuggets to be in nugget form, really. We can just encode them. We can put that in there. Now, I'm going to have to break the camera in a second because I've got some toast and it's going cold. And no one likes, well, some people like cold toast, but I like my toast warm. Now, I'm going to throw that back in there. And I've got a craftable again. 124. Let's. Right, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this to 64, so I'm going to show you something. So I've set that to 64. And then it's taken all it can, so we've got 46 ingots now. And then you'll see that that's currently crafted in there. You see, cancel the job or sub job, shift and left click the item. Left shift, click the item. So let's left shift and click. No. Left shift and click. That's not working. Oh, there we go. Did I have to click it once for each for each item, maybe? There we go, I've cancelled that. 
So that's okay. So I don't know if it has multiple jobs in there. Um, I should have maybe checked to see if it was still cooking coal. I don't know if it was. Let's get it cooking another 64 coal anyway. There. So that's working away again. So it looks like that had finished yet. Obviously each of these will produce 8 carbon plates. So I think I had 16 stacked in here. So that's another 428 meshes, so 128 carbon plates. So yeah, that fully that fully works out right. And pretty soon we're gonna get 43%, we're gonna get a six UU matter there, so I can make another hybrid. So um yeah, for now. I was gonna cut, I'm gonna make the meridian plates off camera, because you've seen me do that, it's just in the implosion compressor in the rolling machine downstairs. And I'll be back when that's done. See you in a bit. And we're back, and I've done a little bit of stuff off camera. Now I thought I might as well automate this so the first thing i want to do is determine which things go in which slot and uh, an easy way of doing that is if you get yourself a red power relay and just uh, stick it on the side that you think something goes in and then put an item in there you'll see which slot it puts the things in so you can see there that industrial tnt does go in from the side that says tnt and i believe it goes in from that side as well and if you look on this side for example, if I, if I try putting the TNT in that side, let's uh, get it again. Try putting it in there. The relay will put it in still. What it does, it puts it into the output. So we can see that that, that side there showing the um, the fuse looks like that's the actual output. And I checked and the inputs through the face there. So to automate this, we need an extension from the ME network across here. We need uh, two export buses, one on the top, one on the side, and an uh, import bus. And I'm going to want a level indicator, I believe. Um, how do I? Mm, not yet, not yet. We'll just keep manually making the industrial TNT at the minute. Yeah, yeah. So, I'd like to be able to fill that with t industrial TNT, but I need to work out how to set the level indicator up. I've added a couple more recipes to the auto crafting. I've put in the quartz fiber. Um, I put in level emitter, export bus, import bus. Is that all I've put in? I thought I put more in. Let's have a look. Oh, and the conversion matrix and the ME interface. And the sticky piston. So now we've got everything in there so we can craft import and export buses. So I want, I want one of them. Let's make one of them and uh, two of them. Let's make two of them. And this should have crafted because everything, I think everything's in there that's required. So two export buses, there we go. And one import bus. Oops, that's not what I meant to grab at all. Uh, that's the, that's the dust that caused that to happen. So each time a dust pops in up here, it moves, it moves everything down one. So I think putting the dust in with the ingots was maybe a mistake. I should have them in the in this one. I think this one that's not pre-formatted. There's all the pre-formatted stuff. I, I did, oh, that's something I, I didn't show. If you shift right click with your wrench onto any of these storage devices, you get this storage priority up and i've set the storage priority of the drive to one and i think the storage priority is no i messed around a little bit and it ended up that next time i looked in there before the all this stuff i think it's because it was closer was shown at the top and now all that stuff shows at the bottom and it's a play around with the priorities a bit but that's how you do that you just shift right click with a wrench and you can set priorities i'm not sure i'm guessing the lower the number, the higher the priority of the storage device. So I'd want that one. And would I want that to be two? And where would that show things now? So that's put them to the top. Okay. So if I put that to one and that to two. Now it's in the right order. So I guess it's the priorities higher the number, the higher the priority. Okay. So 
And we also need some, what do we need? We need some ME cable. Let's grab a stack of that. And keep throwing things in there. And we nearly got two full stacks, yeah, 16. So we nearly got two full stacks of carbon plates. So what was it we needed on here? It was um, export bus on the side at the top and import bus on that side. Then we just need to connect them up. And that can go straight across there. Yeah, it can fit under there, all right, excellent. And so in the side there, one industrial TNT which I think I don't have any but I can make some. Um, where does that come from? Oh, okay, so that's getting dragged. Mm, that's getting dragged back out the back out the side of the. That's getting dragged out of there. Why has that happened? We don't want that. So, so we have to set that so it only drags out the iridium ingots otherwise it's going to keep dragging the industrial TNT out that we put in but I want an industrial TNT in there I want that to move stacks and this is probably cause a loop so that thing is keep going in and out oh no I know what it is it's because I left I think when I was showing you I think I left the industrial TNT in there and I in the output so that's why it dragged out so That'll automatically put that in there for us, which is which is cool. That's what we wanted. Um, I say I'm too much. I apologise. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my hardest to stop doing that because when I play my videos back, it's quite irritating. And if I'm irritating myself, I must be irritating everyone else as well. Industrial TNT we've got yet. We want some diamond dust. And let's take let's take a uh, sixteen of them, and let's take a stack of carbon of advanced alloy. Where is advanced alloy? Come on, there you go. And we haven't got a stack of iridium yet, but we've got a bit. We've got a bit. Let's throw all these in here, and it's iridium on the outside. Of course, what am I doing? This doesn't auto sort. And this is better than two even lumps. So I've got enough for 11. Okay. And then sort that into there. And then once we've grabbed one of these, we can steal it and be away with it. Now, I didn't actually want to turn all the ingots. Did I? I, wanted, I could have done leaving some as actually ingots, but that's okay. Then we can, I mean it's it's a bit presumptuous to think we'll get stacks of that, but I don't think we'll, we'll, we'll be getting stacks of um, iridium anytime soon. So now if I put my alloy ingot in there, I should come back as an iridium plate. Uh, there it is, iridium plate, excellent, so that's working. At some point we need to automate the rolling machine. And that'll get eight iridium plates. That's, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, sling them in there. And get our eight iridium plates. Six, seven, eight. Nice one. And then probably need to make some more ITMT at some point. I can do that there. Let's craft another 64 of them. So that's taking flint and um, sand. I'm not sure how much sand I've got actually. I've got a bit. So that should have restocked that to an extent. So there's eight there, so there must be 64 in the in the implosion compressor over there. That's all working very nice. Working exactly as intended. Brilliant. Stick them in there. And now all we need is a van solar panel. Oh. Yoik. Pinch one of them. There we go, second hybrid. So, I'm going to cut the camera, I'm going to 
check how long the episode is. Yes, I don't know how long I've been babbling for. Uh, go on, where's the golem? Hmm. Is the golem dead? Golem's possibly dead. That's a shame. Let's have a look on the outside here. Is he, uh, has he fallen off? Well, it looks like he's gone. That's a shame. I don't think he'd be able to jump over the edge. I, I'm not. I don't think he can get over them fences. The yeah, uh, no, it's not a fence. It's a wall, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like he's definitely gone. So I don't know if he got struck by lightning or if he fell over the edge, jumped to his death. Oh well. Okay, I'm going to cut there. I'm going to see how long the, the footage I've got up to now is. And I shall be back in a little while. And I'm back again. And the video is a little short. I think it's about 24 minutes up to now. I have a quick scan across the separate um, AVI files and some bad maths. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you a, a fresh Mistcraft Edge. I'm going to throw that one back in there. So the things you need for Mistcraft is writing table. Now actually, I actually stole this writing table from the NPC village. The NPC villages that I've got a Mistcraft building, which is that one there. That you can barely see from here. They actually have a writing table in them, so I stole this one. But uh, they're quite easy to make. Let's have a quick look. Writing table, or writing desk even. Uh, feather, glass bottle, some wood. It's a weird texture. Some wood, that gets you a writing table. And the other thing you're going to need is a book binder. That's this thing. And that's book, book binder. That's some metal and some wood. Some iron and some wood, should I say. That's pretty straightforward as well. And this thing needs some ink in there so I put some I believe ink into a glass vial and then put the glass vial there and I put ink in I may be a little bit wrong with that and his paper up there and you want some notebooks notebooks are straightforward notebooks are just three leather and it's that one we're looking at just three leather like so gets you a notebook use a notebook to store these pages in now I've not worked out how to write ages yet so I won't be showing that in this bit but there's um there's the pages that I've got from my little journeys into the ages so far and them two are both empty and I think there's 30 out of these so you can have all different types of page in, um, in their own in their own notebook so like this one I've named it biomes I just named it by putting it in there and giving it a name. And, oh, so you can scan through them all there. I think you can copy pages out of this and stuff. It's, again, something else I need to work out. But that's where you see your pages. And then, to actually create an age, I'm going to want a bit of paper. You see, I've got all these books from the abandoned libraries that I've found. A um, bit of paper, you just throw a bit of paper in there. That becomes a page and because it's a blank page you can make that into a descriptive book which is there like so and then if i put that onto the stand and i think that doesn't become an age until i actually use it so one thing you need to make sure is you can get back so i've got a mistcraft bag here in there i've got loads of linking books back to here book stands i made all them study so all the books link back to this spot i'm stood on I'm going to take one of them out and a stand out, and I can put that back. Uh, you've got to make sure you have a linking book. Now, to make a linking book, I can make a fresh one just to show you. It's just a book. In fact, let's fill that bag up. So, put a book there, and then you just make a linking book like so. So, if I shift and click, I'll make all of them into linking books. Now, I've got a massive amount of safety books now, as long as I don't lose my my um, ender pouch I can always get back and are they going to fit? look at that it's like, I'm, it's like I'm some kind of genius 
the exact right amount. Oh, it's just purely luck, purely luck. So, okay, I've got a linking book. I've got that ready. I'm good to go. Let's do it. So we're jumping here. Now this will lag for a little while. So I'm just going to have to talk to you while we look at a blank screen. Now depending, there we go. Depending on what the world is, sometimes it lags longer than others. I believe cave worlds take a lot of generation. This looks nice. Nice flat world by the look of it. Very nice. This is a good candidate for a mining world actually. There's no sun up there. Hunger and mining fatigue. So hunger can get quite irritating. You've got to keep eating. But that's not too bad. We'll see if there's a daytime here, if it's permanent night. And right, the first thing I want to do, you come to an edge, put down a stand, put down your book back home, and make a waypoint book. Here we go. That's safety taken care of. So now, wherever I go, I can get back. Now, and as I said last time, generally within about 100 metres of a portal, there's an abandoned library. Um, I don't know if that's guaranteed, but every map I've been on up to now, within, within 100 metres, there's been an abandoned library, which is quite useful. So I'm going to scout or skate around the outside of these tools. I stood there. Yep, they haven't seen me. That's nice. I'm going to jump in here and see what we get. So, as I said before, you get some pages. Birch wood, I think I already had. Um, depending on how you click on these, how you pick them up. So that one there, I shift clicked and it actually put the page straight into the inventory. If you normally click, it just shows you it there. Eternal storm, good for a lightning rod. And tiger biome. And that's what I've got there. And now, I say you might be, you might think that's all there is, but in one of these corners, and it's not that one, so it must be this one. There's always a chest. Oh, there always has been for me up to now, so. I'm going to say there's always a chest. There might not be always a chest, but there seems to be. And then there you'll find some more pages. And, oh, glowstone crystals, nice. Forested hills, that's quite a nice biome. Bright, standard terrain. Standard terrain's nice. Wasteland. Okay, that's like what the biome next to the factory is. So that gets us a nice couple of books. Uh, in one of them I found a notebook that had quite a few pages in as well, which was also very useful. So you can just jump through a few ages, grab a few of them, um, just keep making fresh ages, go to that one and then just leave the age again uh, and, until you build up a decent collection of pages to start making your own worlds. Now another bonus of this, because this is flat, it should be pretty obvious when you can see the little hill dungeons, little farmcraft hill dungeons. So let's have a little scout about. Now this may lag a bit because I'm ge generating terrain. So we'll do a little, see look that's not catching up, let's go a little bit slower, let that generate a bit and hopefully if we do a little circle around our spawning point, oops I'm starving, do a little circle around the spawning point, we should find a Soundcraft dungeon from which I'll be able to pinch a couple of spawners which is very nice come on don't make me a liar yeah. unfortunately yeah because this is taking a while to where load in the freshly generated chunks it's going to take a little while so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly around a bit and I'll cut the camera I'm going to fly around a bit until I find a dungeon and I'll be right back with you I'll see you in a second and I'm literally back about five seconds after I uh, stopped talking. And there we go. Because of the flat landscape, this thing is very obvious. And just kill that guy. And round here, here's our entrance. And these, of course, have got a angry node, and always got an angry node inside them. And jump from behind. Now I don't actually think I've got any empty empty uh, soul shards on me, so it's a check. I've got an angry zombie one there that's got 734 and I think I have to actually Yeah, I've not got any. Okay, so 
There's no real need to go in here just yet, but I'll go in anyway. Clear this up and then um, I'll come back off camera. I'll go back to the house when I finish the episode. Make some more soul shards. And I'll come and steal these two. Steal these two in. Spawners here. Get off me. Let's just light this up for now. And that. There we go. I've got two spawners to come back to. While we're here, let's have a look in the chests. Uh, Thalmium Axe. Uh, Thalmium Ho. And a Redwood Forest Biome. I'm going to leave all the rest of that stuff. I've got loads of spare st this kind of stuff now, so... I'm just going to leave that in there. Which seems a bit weird, but... It's fine. And get rid of spider. Get off me spider. And I'm just gonna put a weapon here as well. So B and then Thaum Dungeon. So hey, right, I'm gonna wrap up there. Uh, as I said, between this episode and next, I am going to make some more soul shards. I'm gonna get them to spawners. I'm going to upgrade this to a tier 5 angry zombie spawner and then I can get zombie brains up as I need them for making rewarded stone and such like. So thank you very much for watching as always and um, hopefully it was entertaining and I hope you join me next time. Cheers. Bye.